morning, good morning, good morning. I am having a lovely Friday morning. Thought I would share a couple thoughts with you guys this morning. I'll wait a minute until a few of you folks want to jump on live. And those of you that are viewing after the fact on YouTube in the future, my pre canned and truthful introduction when you catch me driving please don't send me messages or tell me that it's dangerous what I'm doing because pushing record on a phone that is mounted on a tripod in the vehicle is no different than talking to a passenger checking my mirrors working the other functions of the vehicle etc hey there buddy buddies so here was my thought you guys see the cover image there of the lion in me? That's at a friend of mine's house. I got to thinking to myself, self, you know, sometimes we all talk a tough game. We talk about elevating ourselves to another standard. We talk about doing big things, great things. We talk about pushing ourselves. But when it comes down to it, most of us, I say us, when it comes down to it, most of us don't really want to do what it takes to get the thing. Most of us don't really want to do what it takes because it's scary, because oftentimes you got to do something that's out of your zone of comfort, out of your possible normal realm of conduct, which is interesting, right? So if you always do things that make you comfortable, you're about always going to get the same results. Your muscles are going to stay the same size if you lift the same amount of weights, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? So the interesting thing that I think folks sometimes overlook is the simplistic point that if you want something to change, you have to be willing to go out and change it. You know, I gave a young man some advice yesterday or the day before. It happens from time to time on social media. It happens that folks will engage in conversation in a way that is somewhat less than becoming of a gentleman, right? Guys will make a comment that it quickly escalates into into name calling and other kind of BS. We've all done it, maybe not online, but we've all given into the temptation to be right, to satiate our ego's need to win, because that's what men are wired to do, to win. So I met, messaged this guy in private, and I said, hey man, like if, and this was a, it, this was the context. It was a video about a shooting. This young man wrote that uh, the pussy ass bitch, his words not mine, pussy ass bitch cop in the video was a coward. And I said, hey, those are pretty, pretty strong words when you weren't there. You don't know the guy that was in that video. And it's a pretty heavy judgment. And he said some other flippant comment and then he went on to state after I said, you know, hey, if you feel like that's an uh, acceptable way to talk, carry on. I got nothing for you. And he said, sticks and stones. What did he call me? Sticks and stones princess, I think is what he called me. Something like that. And I chuckled. So um, a friend of mine who's a police officer in another area engaged with him and was just like, trying to give him some insight without without really being too harsh on him because we knew he was a young man well then he started impugning my friend and I'm not I'm not wasting any of our time here to talk about stupid social media bickering because that's meaningless to me but this is where this went I finally sent this kid a message and I said something to the effect of boys kids argue like that kicking dirt back and forth at each other. A, a man, an adult, can say, you know what? I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. Period. End of story. That's really easy to do. It's really easy to say, you know what? I was wrong. I'm sorry. 
And I said, so that's the point we're at. You can just say, hey, I'm wrong. It's not about being t typical keyboard warriors, though. This is what I want to talk about. This is, and yes, it is, it is typical. I don't want to just d disregard what you said. It is very typical, except this is also very typical before there was ever a keyboard invented. And what this is, this is the point. So oftentimes we stand our ground, right? We stand our ground in a verbal argument, in a philosophical argument, in an argument with a loved one. Maybe it's not even an argument. Maybe it's just some kind of misunderstanding. How easy is it just to, to take the, the fight out of a argument by saying, and I'm not talking about just saying this to end an argument. That's something different. I'm saying, there's no way this kid thought it was acceptable to call somebody he's never met a pussy ass bitch. So I said, maybe, you know, maybe you could look at that another way and, and just admit that you shouldn't have said it. And I will respect you more for knowing that that was not the right thing to do. And about five minutes later, he wrote, you're right. I shouldn't have said that. This was a private message. And I said, you know what, man, that's, that's, good stuff right there. That is the stuff that men are made of. I'm not talking about men because you can fight. I'm not talking about men because you can lift heavy weights or shoot guns. I'm talking about integrity and character and honor. It, having integrity and character and honor does not at all mean that you do not do anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you don't screw up from time to time. What it does mean though is that you do the right thing when you do. You do the right thing and you can catch yourself. So sure as shit, not but eight hours later, I catch myself in a similar conundrum. Similar but dissimilar. A gentleman I'd done business with years ago was falsely representing himself on the internet and I sent him a message about something and it was not public, it wasn't insulting or impugning. But he quickly, he took it wrong and he escalated the, the, the conversation. And this is somebody that once upon a time was a, was a friend of mine and, and a mentor of sorts when I was a young man in my 20s. Long and the short of it is the guy's not really a good person, but I started to feel like he sent me a, a, a message last night and then left me a voice message late last night. And I listened to it this morning and I could feel the tension building. And I thought, I'm gonna call that son of a gun and I'm gonna give him a what for. I'm gonna let him know all of the ways that he wronged me and wronged others. I'm gonna let him know what a piece of garbage he is. I'm gonna let him know that he's still a freaking loser. He was a loser then, he's a loser now. And I started to just get steamed, man. And this guy did some really shitty things. He screwed over a friend of mine and I when we were in our early 20s for a lot of money. He was much older. He was like 50. We were in our, our early 20s. and But it was a lesson learned by me. I learned a hard lesson. I, I uh, took some things for granted about operating businesses and such. And, excuse me. Oh, it's not you, it's me. I had a terrible rest last night. Anyway. I'm getting steamed up and finally I thought, you know what, this is so stupid. It's Friday morning, it's a lovely day, I got to replace the water heater at home today, yay. And I called the guy up and he's not awake yet, I left him a message and I just said, hey, it's Mick, good morning. I apologize that we had a miscommunication last night that led to some unhappy messages and ultimately a voicemail. I wish you no ill will. What happened in the past is done and I will do my best in the future not to dredge up old old hurts, old pains and I hope you and your family have a Merry Christmas and left it at that. And I hung up and I, you know, I, I'm sure I'll end up talking to him later for a minute. But how much easier is it to do that than to try to pile pain on top of pain on top of pain? It's really stupid, actually. And so I thought I'd talk about that. We often talk about 
let's just let's talk about physical combatives for a minute. Stand your ground. So in states with stand your ground, I have a right to be here. I can be here. I can stand here. This is my right to be in this parking lot, in this mall, in this wherever. And you, sir, are causing me some fearful duress that now I need to stand my ground and fight. Now look, stand your ground laws were created when for the point of a person not being able to retreat or perhaps I shouldn't have to. Sometimes it is right to stand your ground and fight. So I'm not suggesting by what I'm about to say that we should always retreat. Sometimes it is the right thing to do. Except we have based on our ego, twisted it into, I'm an American and it's my right to be here. It's my right to not have to put up with bullies. You're correct. It, it is not something you should have to do, but it's not your right. That's not how it works. That's not a right. That's not enshrined in the Constitution that you shouldn't have to deal with certain things. Now, it is your right to protect and defend yourself, so don't misconstrue. But we take this this notion of stand your ground and we apply it to so many things. I, I listened to an argument at a family party over Thanksgiving and I was like, what the hell? What are we talking about? And it's based on, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna show you I'm smarter. I know more. Who cares? Now, as a younger man, I was very good at that game. I never wanted to be the one to admit I was wrong. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you I don't admit I'm wrong, but I will say that she's wrong in admitting that. See what I just did? I think I've gotten much better over the years. And the point is, you just have to, like my brother Tommy says, let go. You gotta let go. I think I've shared with you guys some in the past that some of my siblings and I, and I, I can talk for myself, we grew up in an environment that created lots of anxiety, lots of anxiety. And that environment not only bred lots of anxiety, it bred lots of things like uh, fear, depression, uh, guilt, things like the inability or incorrect way of coping with stress and coping with anxiety. And a brother of mine and I, who both suffered from chronic anxiety, decided one day, you know what, we're gonna just get over that. And you know how you do that? You let go. You let go. Just like you can let go if there's somebody pushing you. I want you to call me today. I've been waiting for that call. I want you to call me today. Call me today. We we hold on to things and it ends up, because we feel we need to be right, it ends up bad. Anxiety will tear you apart and become chronic depression, cause you to have sleepless nights, and that's not why I didn't sleep well last night. My shoulder's been jacked. I need to get into the dock. How many self-defense situations would not have need to become self-defense if, if the person involved didn't feel the need to stand their ground, the need to stand and, and push back. And again, I'm not saying that there's not righteous reasons to do that. But if you look at most situations, most altercations, the smarter person is the one that's going to win. So I talked about staring a lion in the face. That lion really is a metaphor for what we fear. And oftentimes what we fear is not a monster like a lion that can chew our face apart. Oftentimes what we fear is judgment from others, judgment from other men, judgment from society, people not accepting us, people not thinking that we're good enough, smart enough, good looking enough, fit enough, strong enough, whatever. And oftentimes those, those metrics that we're 
measuring ourselves with are self-imposed. All of these people that I'm passing on their way to work this fine Friday morning, I don't care what any of them think about me. And to be honest, guys, I don't care what any of you think about me. Now, by the word care, that oftentimes is, is misused. I don't freaking care what you think. It's not what I'm saying. Now, I care what you think in the sense of, I know that if I live honorably, and I'm not talking about piety here, I'm talking about if I live in the fashion that I choose to, for the most part, I will have a fairly easy time getting along, communicating with most people, and moving about my, my days in life. But I'm not gonna make decisions on what I should do with my life, how I should dress, think, act, what gun I should carry, how I should react in a violent scenario. I'm not gonna, I'm not afraid that if I tell somebody, hey man, I'm right, or you're right, I'm wrong, uh, good day to you. I'm not afraid of looking like a pussy so that you are um, impressed. I'm not afraid of, of, of uh, showing the people around me that I'm a, a badass or a tough guy to elevate a situation. More, more importantly, I wanna show the people around me that uh, adult male, a man, can diffuse violence. I wanna show people around me that, and especially my children and the people that I have uh, a, a duty to impart knowledge and, and wisdom to, I want to show them that to win sometimes is looking that lion in the face and smiling and saying, yeah man, whatever, whatever you need. It also is sometimes looking that lion in the face and admitting you're scary. Yeah, it's okay to be scared sometimes. The notion of I'm not scared of anything is bullshit. A lot of friends that I have that saw lots of very horrible combat, every single one of them will tell you you're not human if you're not scared. Mm -hmm. A little sip of some fine coffee this morning. I think I've showed you this before. It's a lovely cup my friends over at Ameriglo made us. So nice, coffee cup. We spend so much time, so much energy trying to hold on to ideas, to notions, to, to fallacies of what we are supposed to be, what we're supposed to do, so concerned about what others think that we never really can let that part of us that should be doing the thinking work. You get what I'm saying? If you are so clogged up in weighed down with all of these concerns about what others are thinking, when I say others, I'm not just talking about your friends. Think about, think about when you are in a situation where perhaps there's some types of altercation building. Do you think like, well, I can't look like a bitch in front of these people. I know I've been guilty of that. When the funny thing is, Peace out, bro, is all that's required. I don't want to harp on that anymore. I think I made that point. Well, this is what I challenge you to think about today. This is what I told that young man last night. You've got two choices. You can do what you're doing. And now I'm not, this is, this is not two choices for all of us because we're all at different areas of our evolution in life. But you've got two choices. One, you can do what everybody else does. You can take the low road, you can take the easy path, you can go about your day in life. And here's the something I'm gonna add to this, guys. Not all of us have the same level of intellect. Not all of us have the same level of, of uh, unfortunately, IQ. Not all of us have the same the same depth and breadth of knowledge and life experience. So uh, this is gonna be different for everybody. But you can spend your time in your life worrying about what other people do, trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to, to compare yourself to all of these other people around you, or you can walk your own path. You can walk your own line, you can do the things that you want out of your life. It's that simple. And for me, needless violence is not something that I want in my life. I've had handcuffs put on me and, and been 
stuck in a jail cell. I definitely do not intend to ever have that happen again, uh, be it for any reason. And so being cognizant of that, I think a different way. I most definitely am not concerned with the opinions of others. It's fun. Uh, well, let's be honest here. I could get a hundred messages from, from students or friends saying good things. I could get a thousand messages from students and friends. I could get 10,000 messages from students and friends and colleagues and viewers or listeners that say uh, kind and uplifting things about carry trainer brand. And then I could get one message saying, you're a douchebag, you're an idiot, you're a loser. And it's like, what I do to that guy? What? Or what the hell is this guy's freaking problem? I'd like to see him in person. And it's funny, I have to remind myself, Mick, you don't have to make everybody like you. It helps when I sing it like that, you know? We spend so much energy tied up in bullshit. Don't let somebody push you into goading that lion. Don't let somebody push you into biting off something that maybe you can't chew or doing something you can't take back. Don't let yourself do that. How many people, how many people have done something and then later you're like, man, why did I do that? I knew I shouldn't have done that. You probably knew you shouldn't have done it, but you'd done it anyway. Mm -hmm. So start to this is this dialogue that's happening right now. This morning when I called that gentleman and left him a message, I said, I, I knew, I knew I needed to do that. Last night, if it was if it was correct for me to tell that 20-year-old kid, hey man, here's what you should be doing, or think about this. It wasn't here's what you should be doing, but here's the choices as I see it. Character or the low road. What do you want to do? If I if it's if it is fitting for me to give that advice, then it is fitting for me to live that advice. Yeah, bro, that's not a real lion. It's a real lion that's stuffed. I wish that was a real lion. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, lion. Yeah, right. That'd be hell. I should I should have just went with that. <laughs> there's no way. Uh, there's no way I would put my. I would put my face in a lion's face like that, but I shouldn't have even said that now. I should have just let people think it, right? That'd have been funny. That'd have been funny. So here's my Friday challenge. We all have this voice that's inside of us, and I'm not telling you that it's God or anybody else. It, you all have this voice, though. That voice is the inner part of your subconscious that you have programmed. Yeah, man, exactly. Sometimes the lion is yourself. And actually, Chet, I think you you hit the nail on the head. Oftentimes, the biggest the biggest lion that we face is ourselves, because as soon as we can conquer self, which is the point I'm wrapping up here, every other problem becomes simplistic, because you can control your outcome. I can't control what anybody else does. Not my kids, my wife, not coworkers, not friends, nobody. But I can control myself, and as such, I can guarantee the results. That's powerful. So begin to listen to that voice. That voice, when it says, don't do this, is probably telling you something that's real. That voice, when it says, this is dumb, you're going to regret it later, is probably telling you something real. Don't allow your fear to goad you into doing things that you shouldn't do and don't allow your fear to stop you from doing things that you want to do by want to do though always base that metric the use the metric of is this something that a man with integrity character and honor would do now if it's something silly like man i really want to cheat on my wife with these two chicks yeah, so that's different, right? If it's this son of a bitch is pissing me off and I want to I want to go out in the parking lot and blast him, that's probably not correct. If a situation can be diffused, only a 
few a fool would add fuel to a situation like that. So that's the moral of the story this fine Friday. The voice made me do it. Yes. Happy holidays to you too. So let's do that. There's 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 a bunch of us here. It's good to use the whisper voice. It's very it's very um fitting that Su Susan Watson, thank you, just mentioned her kids. Does anything really ever change? I've got gray hair and I'm older now, but does anything really change? That voice in your head, the voice in my head, sounds just like he did when I was seven, eight. We got to start listening. That's it. So my challenge to you guys today is pay attention to what that 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 dude or dudette Blair's nuts. What's up, O Canada? <laughs> That's good stuff. So the the challenge for this Friday, so I can get it out and get my business done here. I got to go in and get a pick up a water heater. Our water heater decided to crap out, which is very, very uh, untimely. Let's check out. Let's pay attention and start to analyze based on what's happening inside of you to what's going on around you. Feel when that internal thermometer starts to rise or when it starts to get suppressed and depressed. Start to pay attention to it and then come up with solutions and we can talk about that in a future chat. Come up with solutions on how you can mitigate and control your attitude. And again, attitude guys, if we think in airplane terminology, attitude, this is attitude, right? So up, down when we can control our attitude based on not only what we're taking in, but how we are reacting to it with that inner voice. Most, most everything that we have, that we've manifested in our life, how much money we earn, the woman or man that we're married to or, or spend our time with, the uh, physical possessions we have, the physical body, the health that we have, almost all of the things that we have brought into our life starts right there. It starts with what's going on inside your head. And the sooner you begin to take control of those thoughts, the sooner everything will become much easier. Yep. So that's the challenge. That's the, that's the thought process. Start, start paying attention to what's rattling around inside of you. Pay attention to how you are reacting to, good or bad. And then you can start to break down where some of those feelings are coming from. And the really cool thing is, if there's some stuff there that you don't like, you can quite simply tell yourself, that's not how I react to these situations. In the future, I'm not going to react like this. And that's what you go for. That's how you work it. And eventually, you will begin to reprogram that voice. True. You guys, tell somebody you love them today. Give somebody a hug. If you're training, train hard. If you're not training, think about training. I would also suggest to you get up, move, and groove today because these bodies were not made to sit. They will decay. If you have to stand up at your desk and do 50 air squats every hour, do some jumping jacks with your office door closed, go in the parking lot and do some push-ups behind some parked cars, it is much better than letting your body rot away. Yeah, man. Be good. Love you too.